In this video, we're going to talk about the solution to the velocity problem. Recall that the velocity problem was that we had a position function of an object. So we knew the position of an object at every time t, and we were trying to calculate its velocity at a given time t equals a. Now the best that we could do before was to approximate the velocity at a using the average velocity. We would choose a time t which was close to a and calculate the quotient of the difference in the position over the difference in the time. That would give us the average velocity. Now if we wanted to get a pretty good approximation, we'd have to choose our value of t close to a. And if we wanted a better approximation, we would choose another value of t which is even closer to a. And now we can say to get the best approximation, that is the exact value of the velocity, we should let t get arbitrarily close to a. And we do that using the limit. So we'd say the velocity at a is the limit as t approaches a of the quotient s of t minus s of a over t minus a. Let's look at a couple of examples. We're given the position function as s of t equals t cubed minus 4 t squared. And we are asked to find the velocity after one second. That is when t equals one. So we're going to have to take the limit. And if I make my substitution here, s of t would be t cubed minus 4t squared minus s of 1. So when t equals 1, I'll have 1 minus 4. All over t minus 1. And I should not forget to put the limit here as t approaches 1. So let's pause for a minute here. And try to simplify this algebraic expression. So what we have in the numerator is t sorry t cubed minus four t squared plus 3. And in the denominator, we have t minus 1. Now, we may be able to uh, factor this, uh, if I can factor it, but it, it takes a bit of clever rewriting in order to see how to factor this. Uh, so instead of factoring, what we're going to do is long division. If you remember how to do synthetic division, you could do synthetic division, but I'm going to use just a long polynomial division. So t minus one is my divisor. That's being divided into t cubed minus four t squared plus three. And if we remember the steps here for long division, our first step is to get an approximation. I take the leading term in each one. I divide t cubed divided by t. That's going to give me t squared. And then I multiply t squared times the entire divisor 
So that'll give me a t cubed minus t squared. And here I already forgot, and so let's remember when we're doing long division, whether we are using synthetic division or we are using writing it out long, as I'm doing here, uh, I always want to put in a placeholder for any missing term. So I'm missing a t term, so I'm going to go ahead and write 0t and then plus 3. So this is 0 times t. All right, so now back to where I was. I was going to do the subtraction here. In the subtraction, I have to remember that I'm changing the sign, so it'd be t cubed minus t cubed is zero. Negative four t squared plus t squared is going to give me negative three t squared. And then I could go ahead and to help me keep things lined up, I'll go ahead and bring down the plus zero t. And now I repeat the process. I come up with a new estimate. Now I have our leading term is negative 3t squared. That'll be divided by t. That's going to give me negative 3t. And I go through the multiplication again. Negative 3t times t minus 1 will give me negative 3t squared plus 3t. And I'll have to do the subtraction. And so that'll give me a minus 3t. And then I'll put it down. Plus 3. And I repeat the process. The leading term now is negative 3t. Negative 3t divided by t is going to give me negative 3. So multiplying negative 3 times t minus 1, I'll get negative 3t plus 3, and I have no remainder as I do the subtraction. All right, so now I can go back to taking the limit So I will just have to take the limit then as t approaches 1 of t squared minus 3t minus 3. And I can just use direct substitution now. So I'll have 1 minus 3 minus 3. So that would be 1 minus 6, and 1 minus 6 is negative 5. So v of 1 is negative 5. Let's look at another example. And here we're looking at motion, which is vertical. All of our uh, theory and all of our formulas are still going to be true when we have vertical motion as opposed to horizontal motion. The only difference is that we interpret a positive velocity as going up, a negative velocity as going down. Instead of writing s of t, we're going to write h of t. So if I'm going to try and find the velocity of this particle after two seconds, that means when t equals two, I would need to calculate the limit as t approaches 2 of h of t minus h of 2 all over t minus 2. And so that would be the limit as t approaches 2 of 16 t squared 
negative 16t squared plus 64t plus 4 minus the height after two seconds. What is that going to be? Well, that would be 128 minus 64, so that'll give me 64, plus 64, so that's going to be 68. All over t minus 2. Let's collect the like terms here. I have the limit as t approaches 2 of negative 16 t squared plus 64 t minus 64 all over t minus 2. So let's see if this quadratic expression in the numerator will factor. I'll start by factoring a negative 16 out of the numerator. When I do that, inside the parentheses, I'm left with t squared minus 40 plus 4 all over t minus 2. And I can factor the quadratic expression in parentheses, so then I'll be left with the limit as t approaches 2 of negative 16 times t minus 2 times t minus 2 again all over t minus 2. So I have a common factor of t minus 2. I can go ahead and reduce then to the limit as t approaches 2 of negative 16 times t minus 2. And at this point, I can just use direct substitution, and I find out that that value is going to give me 0. So what does that say in a physical interpretation? That tells me that the velocity after 2 seconds is 0. So that means that at that point, the object has stopped. It was on its way up after two seconds. It stops after two seconds. It comes back down again. Well, I hope you found this video on our solution to the velocity problem useful.